Hi guys. I am back for something a little bit lighter than what I posted this morning. Um, ew, bird poop. Um, so I am here to do a third edition of the Beginner Witch series. Uh, I'm going to start out with uh, reiterating how important it is if you have any uh, space of land it um, and of course it's a little late in the year to start a garden so I get that but even if you have just a few herbs uh, in your windowsill you can do herbs all year round in your windowsill it's if you're a beginner witch and you don't have a whole lot of money it's really uh, an important way to um, save money and I uh, have some things to put in Sorry, my camera is going to be swaying because it's on this basket that I didn't realize the bottom isn't flat. <laughs> so, anyways, um, at least, at the very least, we talked about, the last time we talked about rosemary being an herb that you can substitute for any other herb. Because rosemary very easily takes on the intentions of what you put into it and holds on to those intentions really well. So definitely rosemary. Mint is one of the easiest herbs to um, make. It recreates itself very easily. Um, and I have, I'll have to bring you down and show you my mint, um, my regular garden mint, which I just clipped off a teeny bit what I could see today. And that is, I'm literally, that is, I just grabbed some and clipped some. That's what I could see. It's this huge fairy ring of, of mint, garden ring mint. Then I have my peppermint. I have two areas of peppermint in my yard and one has totally taken over. Um, so I did clip some peppermint today. Um, there's all kinds of ways to keep your herbs. Uh, if you want to keep kind of a fresh uh, amount of your herbs, a good idea is to clip them into small pieces. Um, you can cut them up and put them into ice trays and fill them with water and put them in the freezer. And then you can have that fresh herb whenever you want. Mint is a really good one to do because it's great when you have like friends over for tea or something. You can put, uh, you know, mint ice cubes into the tea and it's that fresh flavor stays put in that ice and it's a really great way to keep it. Um, the other thing is a long time ago, I learned that especially stuff like storm water, which I have been been saving some storm water. We've had some great storms lately. Uh, but if there's any foreign substance that gets into the water that you're trying to save that uh, is able to break down at all, so if you have just a little bit of grass in there or a little bit of, like when I first started out, um, I was reading ingredients for moon water and they would say to put salt in it to purify it, and that's fine if you're gonna use it right away, but if you're not, then that salt is something that will break down eventually, and it creates uh, bacteria in your water, and it you, you can't keep it forever. So I usually uh, don't put anything in my water that I'm storing long-term. I have a bottle for uh, storm water, I have a bottle for moon water, I have, I think I said this before, one of each of the elements, fire, water, air, and earth, um, and I have a couple little chips of stone in the bottom of them because uh, on doing some investigative work, that's the other thing, make sure whatever you put in water, any kind of stone, make sure you re research it to make sure that it's not uh, toxic. It won't break down in the water. Um, but that's, uh, the ice cubes are a good idea. If you wanna keep moon water, um, you can put them, uh, make them into ice cubes and put them into separate containers. I have some uh, from very specific moons. Last year we had a lot of super moons and we had a, I'm trying to remember now, super blood, it wasn't a blue moon, super blood something else moon. And so I saved some um, moon water and I put, uh, I have about a tray of ice cubes in a little container in my freezer that anytime I want to pull out that kind of super charged moon energy, I can, uh, you know, drop the ice cube into my spell and use that. So that's a good idea. Um, my sage, I have just regular garden sage. And lately I have, because I have a bunch of it from last year still, if you dry them, chop them up, uh, have a grinder or even an electric 
um, mixer that is chopper that's able to chop stuff. Keep one just for your magical use though if you have it. Um, that's another thing that you can find really easily at your thrift shops, that kind of thing. I have several in case one of mine breaks down. I have uh, one that's just a manual grinder and then I have several electric ones because there's certain things like um, cinnamon is really hard to do manually. Um, I can do it. I have my granite uh, mortar and pestle that I use when I'm doing my cinnamon, but that takes a long, long time. It's good because you can put a lot of intention in it while it's breaking down, but it is difficult. <laughs> um, but my sage is one thing that uh, a lot of the sage that I have, I will put into a homemade smudge sticks. So that's usually the base that I use for the smudge sticks. Uh, and you want to do it while they are, when you first clip them, the best time to clip your herbs is uh, in the morning, after the dew dries, but before the heat of the day, that's when the most amount of aroma and flavor are in your herbs. So, uh, like for instance with sage, I will take a couple of my pieces of sage and wrap them up with, I get an all cotton string that I use from work. I do a memo, mammography. And our laundry comes in 100% cotton sage. They tie it in bundles with 100% cotton sage and everyone in the office knows to save me those ties. And so I, I have an abundance of, I have a ton of cotton ties. Um, so then you kind of wrap it around so all the herbs stay together. Like I said, sage is what I normally use for my base. You can add all kinds of herbs in there for different intentions of your um, smudge sticks. You let them dry for at least two weeks before they're ready to burn um, and try to keep them in a nice cool dark place so that they don't start growing anything on them and if they start growing stuff on them sometimes that happens nothing you can do about that they aren't good anymore uh, usually at that point if that happens I will um, present them as offering to the Fae because then you don't want to burn them or ingest them or anything like that because you don't know what kind of bacteria is on there, but the Fae are able to break down anything that came from natural things, except for iron. Fae hate iron, so don't, your cast iron cauldrons and stuff, anything that you're wanting to give to the Fae, do not put them in your cast iron cauldrons because they won't touch it. <laughs> they do not like cast iron, uh, iron in general. Um, so sage, use sage bundles if you uh, have an abundance of sage that you want to keep. Uh, you can also, again, dry any herb, break it up. I have uh, um, videos, I'm sure, where I've shown all my herb jars. Uh, I went out and got a pleasant surprise today. The blackberries, yay, are finally ripe. Uh, now blackberries, I feel kind of bad because they, they, we have like an overabundance this year. Usually the animals are right into our blackberries, but I think because uh, on the other side of the house, in our backyard almost, you can see it, uh, is a huge apartment building. And nobody's moved in yet, but with all that um, building and the people, construction people coming in and out and everything, I don't think we have as many animals. So we have an overabundance of our blackberries. Yeah, that's good for me because Lunasa, one of the key ingredients in most of the Lunasa stuff that I make is blackberries. That's a big deal for Lunasa. So I'm going to try to do, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a video on Lunasa and we'll talk about them some more. Um, almost any herb or natural thing that you find, you can use in some magical way. So keep that in mind. That is something to uh, think about when you're on your nature hunt. That almost everything, because it's windy out, I'm going to cover my herbs so they don't blow away here. Um, come on, buddy. Go. Um... The other thing that I realized started blooming, and I have my handy dandy little tongs here. These were, they're actually candle stuffers, but because I can't pick these up, the thistle are beginning to blossom. Um, now thistle is something, all of these are very, very sharp. See the thorns on the thistle? I'm, I'm worried about it coming back at me because of the wind. Um, they are extremely sharp. Do not try to pick up thistle. 
when I collect thistle, I have a basket or a plate or something and I clip the thistle with the plate underneath and just let it fall into the plate because it will poke you. It is very sharp. Um, so if you don't know, uh, like I said, now if you want to uh, add me on a Pinterest, if you have a Pinterest account, I have uh, a specific grouping in there with, oh, come on, you guys got to go. Uh, I have a specific grouping there for uh, herbal correspondences. Um, and I have a bunch of different herbal correspondences in there. Or get yourself um, a book. Look at the library. Look at thrift books. Look at your thrift shops. Um, this is one of my favorites because it's specifically magic. It's uh, a compendium of herbal magic by Paul Barrell. Uh, this book is, I, I relate to this book. I mean, I, I pull this book out all the time. Specifically, I hope it doesn't start pouring if it's sprinkling out of mine, but uh, specifically because it breaks all the herbs down into alphabetical order and tells you all the magical uses for them. So let's turn to thistle and I'll give you an idea of what they talk about thistle for. And there's different kinds of thistle. So uh, it says thistle. The old lore regarding the thistle is inconsistent with its modern magical use. Perhaps running skyclad through the skyclad meaning naked, in case you didn't know that. I didn't know that when I first started. Uh, through the fields after being evicted from the Garden of Eden provided some sharp reminders of nature's reality. In a moder modern herbal, Breathe writes, we read of the thistle representing part of the primeval curse on the earth in general and on man in particular. For thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Then it says usage. The thistle represents the virtue of endurance and can be used magically to strengthen one's ability to survive periods of stress. So during periods of stress where you just feel like, oh, I'm never going to get through this, um, add, an, add a thistle to your magical workings because that is something that survives winter. It survives all kinds of stuff. It is very hard to get rid of. Um, most people think of it as a um, not something desirable. As a matter of fact, in New York, I believe it's illegal to purposely harvest it because it takes everything over. Now I have patches uh, in my, I have an overgrowth on a hill, so I have patches in my hill that I can kind of get away with because people don't know that I'm not cutting it down on purpose. Um, and we used to there's a ton in our yard if we let our yard grow out, which we did last year. Um, it is something that you can dry. You have to be careful when you dry it because the thistle has in the blossom part, so in this big bulbous part, there is uh, a lot of water stored. There's a lot of fluid stored in that bulb part. So you have to really allow it to dry with a lot of air because if you put it into a closed container before it dries, it will start to mold. Um, I lost a whole harvest last year because I didn't, I didn't let it dry quite long enough and something must have been living still. And I put it into a container and this year I pulled it out and it's got to throw it out. So I got to start over this year. Um, <laughs> It uh, strengthens one's ability to survive periods of stress, difficulty, or in herbal terms, to weather the storms of life. Thistles are sometimes used at the autumn equinox to provide the magic of survival to last throughout the fierce winter. Thistles have been used in modern times in animal magic to provide healing and survival for the animals, both feral and domestic. A ritual of healing may be done for an animal, bringing, within, bringing it within a circle which a thistle bloom has placed at has been placed at the four directions. So that gives you a good idea. Thistle, um, you gotta think about what that means to you and what you can use it for, for your own stuff too. Remember we said whatever you feel like it represents for you, that's what it represents. So because it has these great thorns on it, that is something you could use in a spell to uh, keep negativity away, to keep a negative person at bay to bind someone from harming you. Um, and of course then in stuff like hexes and stuff, thorns and that kind of thing are always a good thing. Again, I, I do not do that very often, uh, but 
there are situations where that sometimes is called for when that's kind of the last resort. Sometimes that has to happen. So that is something that I, I use for that kind of thing also. Um, but again, that hardy, able to grow, able to survive, keep that in mind when you're looking for stuff, spell work kind of stuff to do that for. So what else? Uh, so keep your eyes out. Again, when you're on nature walks and stuff, keep your eyes out for what you can use. What is it that you can use um, for magical workings? There's all kinds of stuff and I have through the years collected all kinds of stuff. So uh, I think you can see, yeah, this bush right behind me is a holly bush and I have three of them, three, four, four of them in front of, on the side of my house here. So uh, usually just about the time they're starting to um, bloom their holly berries uh, around the fall, I will start to collect some leaves and I keep the leaves. So I have a bunch. Holly leaves are easy to collect, something easy to use. If we look up in our little magical comp compendium, con compendium, it will tell us what this says and then I'll tell you what I use them for. Okay, holly. So, uh, holly, I just adore this book. This is a book that you can find anywhere. It's really one of the best herbal books out there for magical use. Um, holly is used uh, for counter magic, funeral herb, herb of protection, magical herb, and religious herb. So that gives you kind of all the people who use it and what their general use for it is. Uh, it is associated with Mars and Saturn. Uh, then there's a whole lore of holly. So I'm not going to read. This is like literally two pages long. There is a huge thing of holly uh, in the observance of Yule. Um, and the winter solstice, which is Yule. Uh, a modern herbal. So this book, I have to say, uh, refers to a modern herbal, the book A Modern Herbal, quite a bit. It's a very old text um, that is one of the first texts that were written about magical uses of herbs. So if you ever can find it, I believe it's available online though too, like as a free PDF if you look at it, because it was like 17 or 1800s, so a long, long time ago. Um, grieve. G-R-I-E-V-E, -E, by the way, is the author, and I think it, I want to say Robert, but don't quote me on that. At the very beginning, it talks about his resources someplace. Herbs, no, it's about resources. Okay, Mrs., nope, I was wrong. See, Mrs. M. Grieve is perhaps our best modern herb historian. It's a it is obvious from a modern, modern herbal that she has referred to numerous sources, many of which are no longer readily available. Circumstances have not allowed me to seek out each of her sources. I trust that I will be granted many future incarnations so I may complete my studies. And Robert Graves, that was another person that he uses as a reference. So anyways, there's um, all kinds of magical uses. Um, it's an uh, ideal herb to fashion into a wreath in which to celebrate the welcome of a new priest or priestess into your community. Uh, there is much more to holly than their leaves. The thorns of the leaves are extremely sharp, whether the leaves are fresh or withered. Holly can be included in decorative fashion, carefully added to other herbs for a wreath, or even placed into vases which are set upon the temple. Some have carefully taken holly leaves and use them to decorate a ritual robe. Many have adopted holly as a design. Um, and so that's what I was going to show you is their leaves have these almost barbs on them. Hopefully you can see that. And they are they are very sharp barbs. Not cut you sharp, but they are sharp. Um, and so again, for protection, anything that is sharp to the touch can be used for protection, for binding, um, same as the thistle. 
but there is other stuff that it can be used for. Um, it, they talk about the Holly King. The Holly King uh, is a symbol of the God that is uh, alive and well from uh, Yule until the uh, summer solstice. So from the winter solstice to the summer solstice, the Holly King is the one who is at rule. And then from the summer, nope, I have that wrong. I always screw it up. The, the winter solstice, the Holly King dies. So right now the Holly King is actually the ruler, uh, metaphysically, of uh, the planet, the God ruler. Um, and they always fight the Oak King. The Oak King and the Holly King are constantly battling it out uh, for rule. And the Holly King is in rule from right now. So from the summer solstice to the winter solstice. And at the winter solstice, the Holly King has grown old and the Oak King defeats him. So it's like that constant rebirth. Okay, onward bound. Uh, Lily. Lily leaves. I was going to show you a piece of the plant, and of course I forgot to bring it. But lilies, um, again, are in my compendium, and they are great for certain magical uses. I will pull it out one more time. I'm trying to get through the, oh, it's 21 minutes. Nope, got to go. Uh, you can look, though, on my, I'm sure I have it, and if not, I'll add it to my Pinterest. Um, what holly is, or I, ivy. Ivy is good too. Um, Lily. I don't know. My menopause brain, guys. Sorry. Okay. So, all these beach rocks, I think I showed these before. If there's lines through them, they're called wishing rocks. You're supposed to be able to make a wish on a wishing rock and leave it either leave it for the fay or throw it back to the sea and your wish is supposed to come true so that's a, a magical working so something you can get anywhere um so that is a specific kind of thorn that uh, was i not hot and going through menopause Hold on. All right, honestly, guys, I can't remember, and it's driving me crazy. Um, but these uh, thorns can be found at least definitely around here um, and are great for hexing, binding. Again, anything with thorns, keep in mind, protection, that kind of thing. Okay, so we have maples. We have tons of maples. I think I've talked about them before. Uh, at one point, I found a triple maple leaf. Usually they come in doubles. This is a triple, uh, which to me talks of the triple form of goddess, maiden mother crone. And so I keep that as a symbol of the goddess uh, in all her forms. That's a great, again, keeping your eye open, something simple can turn into a magical working. Um, I'm gonna have to break this up into two, I think, again, because I have too much to go over and I don't want to shortchange you all. So why don't I stop here, and if you are still interested and want to hear more, you can go on to the next segment of this part, uh, and we'll talk some more. I hate to shortchange it. There's so much good information here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Blessings. <laughs>